back to uh, Wrocław in uh, Poland. And the Sky Bowling Centre. Well, we're looking at a superstar. Just going through uh, her final photo call before heading into this match. Omigera or Ora Mireya to give her her full name, which condenses down to that lovely nickname, Omi. Looking to win this title for the third time in a row. And that will be the first time that anyone has ever done that in the history of this competition, which has been running in various guises since 1965. Lekvoesa, just to the right of your picture, you may recognise him. Nobel Prize winner from uh, several years ago, back in the 80s, for his work with uh, the Solidarity Union, initially in uh, Gdansk. Here is guest of honour, and we'll be presenting the uh, trophy at the end. Can Shana NG, who gets this final underway, spoil what could be quite an amazing party and th this achievement Cass if Gera were to do it cannot be understated Guinness Book of Records uh, time I'm afraid yeah what a fantastic feat that would be three times in a row triple world champion World Cup winner and here is the little powerhouse who's been averaging 229 for every game she's bowled this week, over 36 games. High game of 289. And a couple of uh, 279s in there, which could well have been 300 games. It's just a matter of pin count. Can you get those corner pins out? It's not very often that she is going to miss the 1-3 pocket for the right-hander. And she's carried virtually everything this week to end up in the number one seeded position. Yet again. Yeah, Gera from the uh, Dominican Republic. Servicewoman. And has uh, managed to find time to further her bowling career. But uh, this run in the AMF World Cup, truly amazing. Has to come through the domestic qualifiers first of all each time. There is, there is no quota given to the defending champion, which makes this title unique in that respect. But uh, Shane NG, with a, a really consummate performance in that semi-final against Kirsten Penny, looks like she knows where she is on the lane. And if she can get the right carry on those pins, then we're going to see quite a few strikes from her. And I wonder if that will unsettle Gera, who must surely be feeling some pressure with such a massive record on the line. But that's not good from Shona. No, that could be uh, an open frame in frame number two, the 4 six, ten standing. Let's be honest, Omi oh, needed that after a slightly shaky start, so Shana has allowed her opponent back into this one. Oh, good try. Very well, good try at taking that spare out. Yeah, gave it a shot. Unfortunately, it is the open frame, and uh, Omi Guerra goes into the lead. And that's only after a couple of frames. She won in uh, 2010 in uh, Toulon in France and doubled it up. 2011 in Johannesburg, South Africa. And so she's here for the third time, looking to make history. And this is the lady that's going to try and stop her. There's a late 10 very nicely there for Shona NG. She's got a strike, an open frame, and a strike. But having said that, Simon, I mean, any time on television in a world final, there will be pressure on any bowler. Craig Whitehouse, uh, Craig Woodhouse, her coach, standing behind her there. Oh, Ooh. the emotions coming through there. <laughs> there is pressure for Gera, the 35-year-old. Just letting uh, everybody see how she feels about this right now. Yes, uh, <clears throat> a double in frames two and three. And a lot of body language. I don't know whether that's something that Craig's told her to do. He's the team uh, national team coach for Team Canada. And also, uh, as the personal coaching for Umigera, she has done, done for a few years. Look at that, she is fully fired up. Slightly suppressed atmosphere here at the Sky Bowling Centre. You, you might not be hearing a lot of applause. That's because the bulk of the crowd, and it is a big crowd, are seated behind that glass partition. So you don't always pick up their reaction. But this is a, this is a good crowd. I wonder if the, the players are just feeling that a little bit, maybe feeling a little disconnected to the crowd. Yeah, it's a good valid point that you make. I mean, uh, and it's actually Malaysia versus the Dominican Republic, bowled in Poland. So <laughs> it's not a lot, 
Not a lot of local support from Ryan the player, I would have thought. Well, Shana just needs to settle herself down here because Guerra is trying to dictate terms. She's also trying to control that space up by those two ball returns. And, uh, yeah, just a little off her mark at the moment is Shona. Yeah, leaves the two and the eight pin. It's a tricky sleeper spare. One pin right behind the other. Only is uh, clean so far. Spare and three strikes. And that's a good-looking spare from uh, Shana NG. Unfortunately, the problem is leaving those spares. It's been such a high-scoring tournament that uh, when you leave a spare, it's almost like, well... And bowled a particularly good shot. A lot of hustle up to that line. Well, but you, you uh, my goodness, there's a lot of power. You can see the power. I was just going to say, the little powerhouse shoots four in a row. And you can see the rotation on that ball as it comes off the uh, break point at about 42 feet. And just rips up into the pocket, carries all ten. She's here looking for five strikes in a row. And she's well lined up. Great looking shot. She can strike off for a game of 290, which would be her highest game of the week. If she can strike right through 7, 8, 9 and 10. Well, that would certainly be the way to open up in this final. But remember, it's best of three. So Shana NG would not be out of it if she loses this first game. And the uh, pink count is irrelevant. So she just needs to calm it down and find some more sweet strikes like that. Well, Shana's had a high game of 2.79 this week and, and a 2.30 average. So she's no way out of this. Um, the scores were so close for the top three players. And now it's down to head-to-head, -head, three games. That's another one. Yeah, from the uh, coach just behind her. Well, it's her fifth strike and she's got two doubles. It's the open frame that's causing the problem for her. The strikes don't seem that hard to come by, but she had that huge open frame. And we're going for a six pack. Oh, <laughs> she's playing well. She's playing so well. Yeah, she's getting perhaps just a little bit of luck on that one. It's a little bit light in the pocket, but you ride your luck. Especially if it's going to be a six-pack. And now she's up for another one. Really Pretty taking her time on this left-hand lane. You, you get the feeling that this is the one that concerns her. Not two pairs of lanes will be alike, especially these two. <laughs> oh, well done. Well done. That meant a lot, that particular strike. And she feels maybe there that she's managed to close the door on this first game. A little bit of work to be done still. Uh, seven strikes in a row helps any game. It's going to put you 240s if you don't have any open frames. And there's a potential for more. Well, again, we see the 2-8 spare for Shayna. Uh, she left this a couple of frames ago. She did pick it up, but it's not a strike. And so consequently, when we goes further ahead... Done it again, very well taken out. Yeah, it's a good spare, and she, she can strike out for 224. Unfortunately, that's below par for the week, and it's certainly going to be, I would think, below Umigera's first game score, which at the moment still could be 290 if she can strike out. Striking the foundation frame for Shana. And this is the biggest ball. This uh, strike here in the game is one. Well, the first game is one. Yes, this for the perfect start for the defending champion. Just seemed to <laughs> come off that one a little bit, and she was willing it on. Fraction high on the head pin. Cut straight through the one, three, and the five, and missed. It didn't deflect off into the nine pin. Carried straight through. But it's a straightforward single pin spare. I can't imagine that she's going to miss it. And that will be enough to get, take this opening game. So she's happy. It's a low five from the coach. 
There's that Guerra smile, though, that we've seen for a, a couple of years now on the World Cup. We see a huge grin to signify three in a row by the end of this match. It's not over yet, and I certainly think Shane and G has bowled well enough to worry Guerra still. Especially Cass if Guerra loses her way a little bit on these two. Well, she certainly hasn't lost her way all week over 36 games. And she looks pretty cool, pretty lined up. And just showing us exactly how good she is. But you never know. You're as good as your last game. And anything can happen. Do you think the pressure will get to her? When she gets close to that winning line, if she does? I honestly can't see it. But conditions and the environment may change on the lanes. But at the moment, they're holding up under these TV lights. And she's just hit a 269 with two single pin spares. A nine pin and a 10 pin. Had they gone, we would have had a televised 300 game. She bowled 10 strikes. Now, that, that's phenomenal. But this is a chance here for a little bit of no pressure experimentation for Shana to take into game two. And, uh, well, whatever she tried there worked. Yeah, both players playing around second arrow, <coughs> about uh, 10 inches in from the right-hand channel. And it seems to be working, so they're not, they won't change until the lane changes. And they're both uh, well, in the pocket well in the last frame here. 2.24 for Shana if she can get one more strike. You can see from Shana's reaction there, the body language, she's thinking, well, where were those strikes when I needed them earlier in this game? But I think you've got to try and spin that. You've got to turn that on, on its head and be thinking, well, I'm in now. Let's take it into the second game and level this up. Yes, ab absolutely. It has to move on from the open frame. The two spares. She knows she can get in that one through pocket. It's just literally a carry contest. And that's the way to way to finish four strikes in a row a game of 224 so Guerra takes the first one but signs from uh, Shana NG that she is coming into some form now in this final and maybe just calming herself down after that initial pressure that wonderful run of strikes from Guerra setting up the 269 to take the first game and the defending champion well don't celebrate yet oh mate you've still got another one to win but she's on her way to make it three in a row Welcome back to the women's final here at the 2012 Kubica AMF World Cup in Wrocław in Poland. Fantastic bowling centre here, the Sky Bowling Centre. There's a, a real high-tech feel to the whole setup. And can we get a bit of old-school magic from Omegera to create a record which I think we're going to have to wait a long, long time to see equaled three titles back to back on the World Cup. She and Jeanette Baker have managed to get two titles back to back but this is to uh, claim that record for herself and be out on her own. But this is the woman that could spoil the party, Shana and G and certainly Cass Edwards was showing some signs towards the end of that first game which she lost that she got her act together with those four strikes but I'm afraid <laughs> those signs now look to be over. Yeah, it must be a bit frustrating for not only for Shaney, but also for Remy Ong there in the red shirt and the uh, former world champion from Singapore and her coach for the tournament. When she strikes, she looks good when she's out of the pocket. Just doesn't uh, mix up very much, does it? So she starts with a spare. What has she got to do? Well, first of all, she's got to stop Umi from striking which is obvious, and then she's got to start throwing a few herself. And I'm not talking twos and threes, I'm talking fours, fives and six in a row. And that's the starter. Yeah, I think you're right, Cass. It does feel like she's got to throw a big block here. Whereas Omi really just needs to try and stay on track. I just worry a little bit sometimes that, you know, Guerra does get very emotional and she... She was punching the air at the end of that first game, and this is, this job is not done. Yeah, it's, it's as you say, it's an emotional thing. It's an excitement type thing, but she's so cool when she's not showing us her body language. 
she knows exactly where she's what she's doing on this lanes and and she has been all week so i'm sure she's very very confident So she won in 2010 and 2011. She was fifth in 2006 and seventh in 2007. Yeah, so this is the fifth remarkable. time, fifth time that she's qualified for the World Cup from the Dominican Republic. And as you mentioned earlier, Simon, you don't get invited back if you win. You have to re-qualify through your own bowling federation country tournament. And that whole Caribbean zone has some quality players. So she's not just playing in tournaments on her own. She's got a, a real battle on her hands to get through. And the same can be said of uh, the likes of Singapore and Malaysia and that whole Pacific Rim zone. That really is a hotbed of talent. And that's why Shana NG is such a good player. Maybe not a household name yet, but certainly has the quality to cause Gera problems and just needs to find that area on the lane that she played so well against Kirsten Penny. She's no stranger to bowling on television. She uh, plays the Asian tour. And as a fact, believe it or not, she's had a, a televised 300 game back in 2010 and during the Asian Games. Shot the magic 12 in a row in a final on TV. So they don't come along every day. We move back on. Uh, the bowlers in Singapore are extremely well known. They are household names in their own country, treated as superstars. And do produce results at a consistently high level on the international stage. Now, Gera, for the first time since that opening frame of this final, with a slightly more nervous expression on her face, I think we'll see a little bit of emotion coming through if she can string a few more together. God, those slaps must hurt. <laughs> Poor old Craig. Poor Craig, yeah. <laughs> well, his bowling hand as well. So we're up to the halfway stage already, and it's uh, pretty even. Now, to me, looks as if Shana has just taken a, a tiny little move to her right. I wonder if she'll do that on the left-hand lane as well. It certainly worked for the right hand. Yeah, well, she may have noticed that uh, the lane oil and lane condition has broken down a little bit. And uh, it's a testing time. Oh, <laughs> both corner pins out simultaneously. That would have that would have just had the heart in the mouth for a second. Spares the 7-10. <laughs> great, great <laughs> all all in shot. one shot, very all clever. All in one shot, but the interesting thing is it's four strikes in a row. Well, After that's what you said she had to do, Cass. Yeah, absolutely. But you've got to look out because this little powerhouse is also looking to make four in a row here. It's all very, very close. It's a strike fest from both players. Now, a double here for Gera on this visit to add to the strikes that she already has would surely set it up it, she is on for this three in a row she really is well that actually makes five strikes in a row and she's gonna if she can strike off she's got a 280 game and that's going to be difficult to beat but if ng strikes off she's going to be 290 that would be just ludicrous scores but befitting of a world cup final this is what the fans have come to see you want a high scoring contest but ideally you want a close contest as well and that's what these two are producing in game two and Gera I'm sure trying to keep some of those thoughts at bay has to just concentrate on the job in hand rather than the prize at the end of this brilliant this is very very good from NG in game two <laughs> fantastic that's seven in a row so pressure must be on Umigera now. She must realise, well, this girl can strike as much as I can. So anything that's not a strike, well, the score's going to be going backwards. So every ball is an important ball. A shout from Woodhouse there. That was nearly a, a baby split. It was high through the face of the number one pin. It left the four and the six pin standing for a fraction. 
the four pins gone, but it's a spare as well. Five strikes in a row and a spare. And a full start because one of the cameramen was moving. Yeah, a little bit of movement. I mean, everybody's trying to do their job, but unfortunately from Guerra's point of view, that can be very, very off-putting indeed. And it is, it is quite an unusual setup for this final. You've already mentioned about the lanes, Cass, but, but the way the crowd are around it and behind the glass panel, the way some of the, uh, the VIPs as well are seated, this is quite a tricky environment to get used to for the final. And a little <laughs> stick on the lane as well. So uh, everything against Gera there. She can uh, strike off a 2.59. That's what the difference uh, spare makes. Is that for the foundation frame? It's frame number nine. Shayna NG sitting with seven strikes in a row. Ooh, and again, it's high through the head pin. Got a bit lucky there in the foundation. Honestly, Cass, I, th I think Guerra was over revving coming into this second game. And she's going to have to calm it down if it goes to three. Shayna's still got to put the lid on this one, but I think this is going the distance. Well, that's uh, striking the ninth, and that's eight in a row. She's just got to keep the ball on the lanes, and she will actually can shut out Umigera. Shana can go 260 plus with a spare and a strike in the uh, tenth frame. Not quite. Left the seven. Smile from Craig Woodhouse confirms that Gera is technically still in it. Something almost Remy on about this performance here from Shana. We've seen Remy do this on a number of occasions. Very scientific with his approach to this sport. And he is a player that will dig himself out of trouble, find the line, and then strike it off the sheet for the win. Simon, one pin will be enough to shut out Umigera, even if she can strike out. It's not going to go in the channel. She's going to hit some pins and take eight. That'll do. And she will score 267, which is a really good game. And it's going to be enough to tie this one up at one all, no matter what Umi can do. Gera, as with all 10 pin bowling matches, will bowl this one to its conclusion, even though this particular game is dead. It is one all. But Gera here, I think this is probably the most important part of this entire tournament for the Dominican Republic bowler. She's got to settle things down out on the lane. She was just getting a little carried away emotionally and she's paid the price and now it's back to square one. Simon, yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think you're, you're absolutely spot on with that uh, little bit of aggression that you're showing, which is, is okay, but there can be too much. And, and yes, she's got to, she's using these last couple of frames, last couple of shots just to relax herself, now that she's still in the pocket, the line's good. And it's going to go to uh, overtime. It will be one all. And everything to shoot for. Turns into a bit of a roller coaster ride, this one for Guerra. And as Cass Edwards says, we are evens heading into the third and final game for this World Cup title. Coming up after the break, stay with us. back to the Women's World Cup final here at the 2012 Cuba AMS Blue Ribbon event. Shana NG has got a real chance here to spoil what would have been the biggest, one of the biggest parties that we've ever seen in 10-pin bowling for Umigara if she could have put together three back-to-back -back World Cup victories. But uh, this one really is on a knife edge. Third and final game, the winner of this one wins the trophy. Who's your money on, Cass? Well, um, Shania has just shot uh, an average of 242 for her last four games. It could be anybody's. Uh, Umi could have shot two 300 games, believe it or not. It's all down to this one. Great start from Guerra. Proving there why she has the quality to win this title for a third time consecutively. Seemingly at the moment to have uh, dealt with that little hiccup and that's the problem when you get very emotional down on the lanes There is sometimes a downside to that which she experienced towards the end of game two Shaking her head looking upset uh, Camera operator moving as well to contend with 
in her eye line, but oh no, 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 after such a good first delivery, the left-hand lane has caught her out again. Well, I can't understand what's happening. She's obviously thrown it further right than she wanted to, and she's left the two ten split. The ball just didn't get up, but I mean, there's a lot of back end on these lanes, and it just didn't make it. And that is an open frame for Umigera, and I don't think we've seen one of those for quite a few games this week. 2-10 split on the left-hand lane. And now it's Shana NG's turn to make sure she keeps those thoughts of a win at bay in order that she can keep doing what she's doing very well at the moment. That's a lot of strikes that she's putting together. And Guerra now, well, she looks a little bit beaten to me. Well, she's certainly not as happy as she was in games one and two. But we know she can string six or seven strikes in a row. So it's a matter of watching this space. But uh, stringing the strikes together at the moment is uh, Shiny NG from Singapore. Looking to steal this one. Umi was the, basically the odds-on favourite. It would have been such a... Uh, Fabulous win for her if she could win three titles in a row. She comes back with a strike on that uh, right-hand lane. She's got to double up. She's got to get this uh, open frame covered. The 2 tenths split she had, and who's looking happiest in the uh, back there? Shana NG and Remy Ong. Well, Remy's not given to uh, too much frivolity down there on the lane, so for him to be laughing, it must be good. Big smiles all round for Team Singapore. Very, very serious game face on for the Dominican Republic. And Guerra needs this straight through the head pin. Ooh. Leaves four standing. And that could be real trouble now for the champion. A massive overreaction from the last shot on that lane, which left the 2 10 split. She's come deep inside and gone straight through the head pin. Good effort to spare, but that's two open frames. And we always say this on 10-pin bowling programs on Eurosport, but an open frame is a killer too. Well, that can finish it. Well, she's got to shoot five or six in a row now just to get back into this. In the meantime, Shana NG has just got to stay clean. She's uh, got a slight lead. You know how well she can strike. The one that was just a fraction high, wasn't it? It was so close. Leaves the four pin standing. She's got a 25 pin lead now. Yeah, and because of those two open frames for the moment, Cass, spare's good enough for Shana. Absolutely, yeah. Spare is a... Uh, well, it's an advance. The score will progress. Straightforward four pin is good enough. And there is the difference. Oh, dear me. Let me get it wondering what could have been but she has to try and somehow cling on to the hope that this is not over yet not looking the happiest bunny in the hutch is she what damage can uh, Shana do now well it's just uh, <laughs> it has been a strike fest and uh, Shana's coming out in the third game and really taking advantage of those two huge open frames left by uh, Umigera who can do nothing now, she must strike. Went after that one way, way too hard. And has tucked that right across in front of the head pin. Yeah, leaves the six and the ten. Makes really the square, has. but uh, Simon Squares are not good enough, I'm afraid. No, she's really lost her composure here. That's what she's playing for, to get her name onto that trophy for a third time in a row. But now, it's looking very doubtful indeed. 224 is a maximum score if she can strike out. Well, there's the first one in frame six. But 224 may not be enough because uh, Shana Eng is averaging 242 for the last four games. And she looks quite at home on this uh, strange pair of lanes that aren't quite a pair. And there's another one. That's looking so good, isn't she? Taking advantage now. All that pressure's come off. All the weight off those shoulders now. And the arm is swinging very, very free. And as long as she doesn't overcook anything here, as long as she stays with exactly what she's doing, this is going to be virtually impossible for Guerra to salvage. 
Yeah, she could well be shot out of this. That uh, more strikes there for Shayna. And she knows this is the last game. There's nothing else to come after this one. If you win this one, you're World Cup champion. Well, there we go, it's two strikes in a row. She's got to keep doing that. She's got to just keep going right to the end of the 10th frame with strikes. Morgan just gets stuck at the foul line. Oh, gets a bit of luck there. And there's the emotion coming through once more from Guerra. But it really is out of her hands now. As long as NG doesn't make a mistake, this will be her title. Oh, dear. <laughs> Solid nine pin there. The ball just deflects straight through. Too much power on it. But the spare is going to be good. She holds on to about 28 pins lead. It's just a matter of timing it up now. It's the foundation frame. The girl from Singapore. And that will do nicely. And I think, Simon, that a strike there with whatever she can put together in the 10th frame will be too much for the two-time champion from the Dominican Republic. She's not going to make it three in a row, I'm afraid. But of course, you have to bowl on through to the end of the game, and this must be hurting for Guerra right now. I think this oh, game will dear. haunt her for some time to come. The six-pin bounces right around the 10-pin. It's a flat 10. And I think she's resigned to the fact that uh, she's not going to win. And Craig uh, Woodhouse looks pretty uh, disappointed as well. So, Guerra trying to hold back the tears, I'm afraid. She will remain along with Jeanette Baker. Oh, dear. And just to, just to finish off, he drops one in the channel. This tournament is all over. And there's oh, a few so tears close. as well. So close. She has been an absolute superstar over the last few seasons on the Cubic AMF World Cup. I think all of us really did want to see her win those three titles to go into the record books. That would have been pretty special, but it yet again underlines just how tough this tournament is. And, and, how, uh, and how emotional she is, Simon, as well. Yeah, I mean, she was... As far as she was concerned, mentally, I think when she stepped onto this lane, she was ready to take this title away, and now she's got to combat the very opposite of those feelings. And uh, this is horrible. This is hurting her a lot. Well, <laughs> four pins going straight through the head pin. It doesn't really matter. Poor Emmy is uh, utterly, bitterly disappointed. But there is a new champion sitting at the back there. What a time for the wheels to come off. Oh, this is this is tough to watch. It is, yeah. Um, you'd think she'd just sort of put the ball down and say that's it and con congratulate her partner. It's all over, I'm afraid. A 169 is the lowest game of the week for Umigera. And she signs off as a former double World Cup champion. So, the defending champion bows out. It isn't that magic three in a row, and in floods of tears. Omigera now just has to try and cope with this situation. It's going to be one of those losses that takes a long, long time to get over. But uh, let's not detract from the fact, as Cass said, we have a new champion, and what a cracking champion. Shana NG has coped with some unbelievable pressure in this World Cup final, and she's come through it superbly. Yes, it's been a great performance. Um, she's averaged 240 on television. You would suspect that that would be enough to win most tournaments. There we go, coach. Well done. Got the tissues. But I think he thought it was going to be crying of a different variety at the end of this final. So, Shen NG to finish this one off in style been a little overshadowed by what has happened to Umigera but she has achieved something that so few Tempin bowling athletes achieve she will be the 2012 Cubica AMF World Cup champion 
what a tremendous victory that is and that will be very well received back in Singapore and a little bit of credit as well to coach Remy Ong because he's clearly kept on the case and he's managed to find a way for his athlete to do this oh well done to Omi Gera. on her feet to applaud this last delivery and confirmation of that final score Gera didn't challenge in the deciding game and Shanna NG takes it home and Prolesa and uh, John Walker, CEO of Cubica AMF, to present the trophy. Shana Ng is the champion.